In the previous video, we looked at the Modigliani-Miller theorem of capital structure and cost of capital, propositions one and two, under the case where there were no taxes, no corporate taxes, and no bankruptcy costs. So what we want to do is we want to look at the model now under case two, the case where we have corporate taxes. And here's how it works. In the United States, interest on debt is tax deductible. So when a firm adds debt to its capital structure, it winds up reducing its taxes. And what happens when you reduce your taxes? You happen to increase cash flow. Now this will re result in a reduction in net income, obviously, because you're paying money to the government, but you're going to increase your cash flow. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we have a case of the unlevered firm, we'll call it U, and a levered firm, we'll call it L. They both have earnings before interest and taxes of 1000 In the unlevered case, there's no interest, so taxable income is EBIT, is the full $1,000. If we assume the taxes are 30%, or the tax rate is 30%, there's $300 in taxes, so net income is 700 Let's look at the levered firm. Same $1,000 in EBIT, $80 in interest, which means that we have $920 in taxable income. And what's the case here? We have $276 in taxes, 30% of 920, which gives us $644 in net income. So, what we're really interested in is cash flow from assets. Now, if we assume there's no depreciation, and here we don't see any depreciation, uh, well, actually, depreciation would be above EBIT. We're going to assume no depreciation. Then cash flow from assets is simply going to be EBIT minus taxes. So in this case, it's the same. 1,000 minus 300 is 700. In the case of the levered firm, it's going to be EBIT minus 276 or 724. So what you see is there's 24 extra dollars in cash flow. And that comes from what we call the interest tax shield. Let's see how that affects the value of the firm. Here we have the case where, and again, here are the assumptions. We have the tax rate times the uh, interest payment, the interest expense is going to be $80. We're assuming 8% debt and $1,000 in debt. So $80 in interest. The tax shield is going to be 30% the tax rate times the interest expense or $24. Now if we assume that the company is going to maintain this tax, uh, this tax shield forever. That is, they're going to maintain their debt. They're not going to pay off their debt. They're going to maintain this $1,000 in debt. We can figure out the present value of this, of this interest tax shield. It's $300. Okay, so it's going to be uh, a couple ways you can do it. It can be debt times the rate on debt times the uh, tax rate divided by the rate on debt. Okay, RD cancels, so you get debt times the tax rate. So 1,000 times 0 0.3, $300. Let's see how that looks graphically. What we have here is the case where if there is no debt, okay, we have the unleveraged firm, okay, down here, is the total debt that's being used. Then this sort of pinkish line here shows that the value of the firm doesn't change because you're not using any debt, so it's always the same. On the other hand, if you choose to use debt, VL, value of the levered firm, is going to be equal to the value of the unlevered firm plus this tax shield. So you can see that that's the difference here. A firm that uses more debt actually winds up increasing the value of the firm if 
there are corporate taxes and those taxes are, 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 are I'm sorry, if there are corporate taxes and if the interest expense is tax deductible. And remember, we're not assuming any bankruptcy costs. So using more debt doesn't increase the risk of bankruptcy here. So in this case, if you want to value, if you want the greatest value for the firm, you should simply use 100% debt in your capital structure. Let's see how this looks for Proposition 2, which deals with the weighted average cost of capital. Here's the case uh, that we have where we have the return to the unleveraged firm. And we know that the return on equity from proposition from case one, proposition two, is upward sloping. If there's more debt in the capital structure, there's going to be more risk, so stockholders are going to require a higher return. But what happens here? It turns out because of this tax deductibility of the interest payments that the weighted average cost of capital goes down as we add debt to our capital structure. And you can see what it does is it approaches the rate on debt. So if you used 100% debt in your capital structure, it would be equal to the rate on debt. That would be your weighted average cost of capital because the um, percentage of equity used to finance the firm would be zero. So this is the case where, again, if you want the lowest cost of capital and you want the highest value of the firm, what should you do? In this case, you should use all debt to finance the firm. Now, in the next video, we'll take a look at case three where we add bankruptcy costs. And this is a much more interesting case, but in this case, the optimal capital structure is to use all debt in your um, all debt to finance the firm.